I have listened to senators speak to the President of the United States on the phone. But what would it take for a sitting United States senator to actually hang up on the President? Because that's something I've never seen. I have never seen a senator tire of speaking to the President and just decide the senator has better things to do and hang up. The President, in this case, who is a member of the same party as the senator, we have now seen that happen because Senator Bob Corker had just such a conversation with President Trump. This was about President Trump's tariffs on Mexico, Canada, and the European Union, our strongest allies, who the president is now trying to say are a national security threat to this country. Bob Corker is the chairman of the, or chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, and he knows better, and he's not running for re-election as a Republican, and so he has introduced a bill that would require congressional approval when a president wants to enact tariffs based on national security reasons. According to the Washington Post, Corker said the president called him Wednesday morning and asked him not to file the bill, but Corker rebuffed Trump's request. I'm a United States senator, and, you know, I have responsibilities, and I'm going to continue to carry them out. Corker said he told Trump. He's obviously not pleased with this effort, said Corker, who has clashed with the president in the past. We had a heartfelt conversation. Finally, a lot of time had gone by, and I had other meetings. Heartfelt conversation is Southern gentlemen for you can imagine. No one's time is more valuable than the president's time. I can remember sitting in the Oval Office worrying about the amount of presidential time we were using to talk about a tax bill, especially on days when I saw the CIA director out in the lobby waiting to go in after us, which might have been something much more important. But time with this president <laughs> is apparently worth less than other meetings to Senator Bar Bob Corker. And he's not the only one who's got better things to do than to talk to the president on the phone all day. Mr. I think president, we're doing very well. Let's see what happens. Okay, uh, we're running out of time. It's inappropriate just to be willy-nilly um, throwing tariffs around and changing your mind and, and throwing them around this direction and changing your mind. I just don't think that's you, you, that's not the way you deal with economic issues like that. And to clarify, to state that they are you know, national security issues when, I mean, there's almost no way you could stretch these to be national security issues. It then is abusing the authorities that you have. Joining us now is George F. Will, Pulitzer Prize winning syndicated columnist and an MSNBC contributor. Uh, George, that certainly sounds very obvious to me that there's no national security issue uh, involved in trade with Canada. But uh, the president uh, seems to think that the Canadians are a force to be uh, uh, somehow pr protected from. Yes, well, the president's mad at China, so he's poked Canada in the eye. And it's, it's hard to follow the reasoning here. The Corker Amendment which would claw back just some of the power that Congress has improvidently given to presidents long before this. It's interesting that they made this vast grant of power for the president to do pretty much what he wants with trade in the name of national security. They did this in 1974. That is just as they were removing from office a president of the United States, Richard Nixon, who had abused power in many ways, always in the name of protecting national security. You know, everyone knows a socialist ran for president in uh, 2016. People are just beginning to realize, I think, that the socialist won. If socialism is, as I think it is, the thorough permeation of economic life by political considerations and government power, that's what protectionism is. It doesn't give rise to crony capitalism. It is crony capitalism. It's, it's supplanting the market by the biggest, bossiest government you can imagine that tells Americans what they can buy, in what quantities, and at what price. It's astonishing. And uh, it's, it seems that international trade is, is one of the, the least understood things in our government policy, especially by politicians, uh, because the president seems to think that tariffs are something that foreign countries will have to pay to the United States when every economist is trying to tell them they are simply sales taxes that the American consumer, the Trump voter, will have to pay. Tariffs are taxes collected at the border. 
And when you have tariffs on, say, aluminum and steel, what you're doing is cutting the defense budget. That is, you are effectively cutting what the defense budget will buy that's made of aluminum and steel, which is almost everything the Defense Department buys. The, uh, the, the, the G7 meeting is coming up tomorrow, and uh, President Macron of France is welcoming Donald Trump to it with tweets such as this. Our values and interests are built through multi, uh, multilateralism, including American interests. Let us look at history. Isolationism is bad for the American people. I think President Trump knows that. What's your reaction to that? Well, he's quite right. Joan Robinson, a very distinguished economist and an economist of the left, by the way, said protectionism is when you blockade your own ports. It's, it's weird to do this, to, to raise the cost of the goods and services that the American people are going to buy. So you begin by, in the name of protecting a few American jobs, you cost many more jobs throughout the radiating effects of the economy, and you lower the living standards of the American people. It sounds optimistic for uh, President Macron to be saying, I think President Trump knows that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's being more polite than he's required to be at this point. The funny thing is, we, it, the president was supposed to understand nothing but business. He doesn't understand business. George F. Will, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.